Hello everyone. Sorry it's been such a long time since I posted anything, but I feel so compelled to post this because I believe it's so important for anyone who's visiting the Philippines for a long period of time or even perhaps a short period of time to help mitigate the chances of you becoming indebted and in trouble while visiting the Philippines. So if you plan on visiting the Philippines longer than a week or two, I strongly suggest that you have some sort of idea what you're going to do if you get yourself in some medical trouble. That being said, I strongly suggest that you get medical travel insurance and also evacuation insurance. If you're traveling and you're injured on one of the provinces or even in some major areas that you might need to be evacuated to Manila or to your home country, and that costs a lot of money. But even so, that you should have some sort of idea of what the costs are if you need to go to a public hospital or a private hospital. Your quality of service will definitely depend on where you go. There's not a lot of videos out there on YouTube about medical insurance in the Philippines. There is a person over at uh, Amazing Philippines. His name is Rod. He just did a video recently, and I really enjoy it. So I suggest that you look at it. If even if you're not ill, they and you need some procedures done, you will be able to find out kind of what is necessary and the prices you might pay at a public and a private hospital. I know that there are some of the people who need optional or they're looking at getting uh, knee replacement, uh, breast reductions because of their their back problems, or they needed a glaucoma surgery done, or they needed some sort something's done that people are going to the Philippines for medical tourism reasons. And there are some high quality hospitals in Cebu and Makati and some other, and even in uh, Manila that you can go to and you would save potentially uh, double, triple, quadruple um, in prices and still get the same quality of care that you might receive in your home country. Even ourselves, when we went to the Philippines this summer, our poor little Amanda Panda, she got ill and then believe me you, it was a really heartbreaking thing. We weren't sure what caused it and we still don't know now. We spent time at the hospital. They did lab work, and I'm gonna share with you how much that cost right now. Just to go to a private hospital, the price was really good. It only cost 300 pesos, or about $6, to visit a, a doctor there. We went to our, my sister-in-law's pediatrician, and she has a hospital, uh, outpatient clinic there at the hospital so it only cost six dollars there the lab work stool sample analysis was 200 pesos or about four american dollars at 50 pesos to the dollar but the most expensive thing was the antibiotics dash medicine which was almost almost a thousand pesos or twenty dollars so less than 26 or 28 american dollars thirty dollars that we were able to see a professional and get a consultation in medicine, which is pretty reasonable, especially in a spare of the moment sort of thing. And it's important to know where you can go, whether it be a public or a private hospital, and how much you're gonna pay. We went to a, a private hospital, as I mentioned before, in Zambonga City, in the, pro in the province of Mindanao. In my opinion, the hospital cleanliness and the standard of care was not quite the same compared to Western standards. I agree with a fellow buddy, Chris Wren from a Brit in the Philippines. I agree with him wholeheartedly. And so you need to look at what type of hospital, you, if you needed to go to, uh, what type of quality uh, care you would receive. Of course, if you went to a public hospital, you'd be waiting even longer than a private hospital. It would be really nice that if they would have a private hospital just f for expats and foreigners. 
but unfortunately they don't have that yet. But I'm sure later, they, if they continue offering uh, retirement visas and wanting Americans and other foreigners to live there and retire there, that they will ex- that foreigners will probably request and even re- require and demand that the service will be better. For example, that you can make an appointment and be seen at a certain time and you won't be waiting two, four, six, eight hours to receive care. We waited about four hours, which is still a long time. You must prepay a deposit in part or in full for your expected medical stay and procedure. So it's important that you have money budgeted aside no one knows if they're going to walk across the street and get hit by a jeep knee or, or worse, you become really ill. And it's important to have, like I said, traveler's insurance or a good sum of money to pay for your procedure and your expected medical stay in case you get hurt or injured there. It's unlike other countries where you pay at the end. In addition, that if you're injured, you'll need a tear taker. So hopefully if you're with family, you'll have a family member there or friends or somebody there who can help take care of you. Nursing is not provided for you except for doing medical procedures. But for the day in and day out thing, as far as your care, you will need someone to be there at the hospital for you. You could hire a nurse and they would provide care for you, but that would be an additional charge. About my daughter's sickness, that we were so careful of what to eat and what to drink, and we're still not sure where she became ill. She, be, she had some sort of intestinal virus. Like I, I've traveled to the Philippines before, to Mexico a couple of times, and Canada, and, and other places. And so we were very careful to be, to be mindful of what we eat, i.e., Drinking water, drinking ice, certain dairy products, anything like that. We, we, we stayed away from that. We were very careful to only have bottled water or canned things and so forth because we didn't want to take a chance of, of any of us getting ill and possibly ruining our vacation or having medical problems. So unfortunately, we don't know what that was, but I'm glad that we were able to get antibiotics and so forth the medicines that Amanda needed to be comfortable and within a few days she was fine but just saying that it's good to have medical coverage or knowing what you need to do in case there's an incident or accident so that's basically I wanted to share with you that please look at that video for yourself and your family if you know what to do in case someone in your party or your group becomes ill and that you can do some investigation before you get there. An ounce of prevention is definitely worth a pound of cure. So please, like I say, look in the traveler's insurance. There's some awesome web uh, sites there that you can look up traveler's insurance. And if you need some more advice, I can tell you what traveler's insurance I had for my first trip. And uh, I didn't get any this second time because, like I said, my wife and my family knew of which medical doctors and hospitals and where we could go. So that helped a little bit. But I still feel that I I would want to get medical insurance in case uh, there is an emergency or accident that we could get the best care we could get while being overseas. All right. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, please feel free to ask and I'll try to answer it. Check out uh, Rod from Amazing Philippines. He does an awesome video that I know some people might look to having some insurance work done, some elective insurance, for uh, which they call medical tourism. There are some real great places to get things like that taken care of. Save thousands and thousands of dollars, and then afterwards you can have a little vacation in a five-star resort and look around. It's definitely worth it. I'm sure that there are some people there or here who could help you with that. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. Or you can, I'm sure you can tune in to Rod and subscribe to his channel. And 
Thank you for subscribing to mine. Take care and I'll talk with you another time. Thanks. Bye.